This video was captured during the re-entry process of Space Shuttle Columbia on February 1st, 2003. Four minutes after this recording ends, the shuttle would disintegrate, killing all of the seven astronauts on board. The event was witnessed by many on the ground as the shuttle broke apart. It was the second of NASA's space shuttles to be lost in a fatal accident. What caused this breakup to happen, and could the astronauts have been saved? Space Shuttle Columbia was one of five spacecrafts produced as part of NASA's Space Shuttle program. Columbia was the first of the shuttles to be built, and was the first orbiter to officially launch the program, completing its first mission in April of 1981. NASA's space shuttles were imagined to be a reusable spacecraft. Between the years of 1981 and 2011, these space shuttles aided in space exploration and contributed greatly to the scientific efforts of the time. However, the Space Shuttle program has not been without incident. In 1986, tragedy struck at NASA as Space Shuttle Challenger suffered a catastrophic explosion during launch. The incident killed seven astronauts and brought the safety of the Space Shuttle into question. The remaining Space Shuttles were grounded for over two years before resuming in September of 1988. Challenger's sister spacecraft, Columbia, would go on to perform several more space missions before it would make its final trip into space in January of 2003. The launch date for Space Shuttle mission STS-107 was set for January 16, 2003, after years of multiple delays and setbacks. Seven astronauts will board the Space Shuttle. Commander Rick Husband, aged 45. Pilot William McCool, aged 41. Mission Specialist and Engineer Kalpana Chola, aged 40. She became the first Indian woman to go into space in 1997. Mission Specialist and Payload Commander Michael Anderson, age 43. Mission Specialist and Zoologist Dr. Laura Clark, age 41. Mission Specialist and Surgeon Dr. David Brown, age 46. An Israel-born Payload Specialist and Electrics Engineer, Elan Ramon, age 48. Together, they would spend the equivalent of just under 16 days in space. During the mission, Columbia will orbit the Earth 255 times and travel a distance of over 10 million kilometers. The purpose of the crew's mission was to study the development of life in space. In the payload compartment, the shuttle is carrying a research module built by the space technology company SpaceHab, now known as Astrotech Corporation. Waiting on launch pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, Space Shuttle Columbia is preparing for liftoff. For launch, the Space Shuttle, or what is commonly referred to as the Space Shuttle, the orbiter vehicle, is connected to a large orange-colored external fuel tank, which provides the fuel for the three large engines at the aft end of the orbiter vehicle. To help power the spacecraft into space, there are a further two solid rocket boosters, or SRBs for short, which are also attached to the shuttle orbiter vehicle. As is common knowledge, the rocket boosters and external fuel tank detach after several minutes after launch. First the rocket boosters after only two minutes, and the external fuel tank several minutes later. This distinctive bright orange external fuel tank was disposable, while the rocket boosters could be recovered and reused. The external fuel tank was designed to burn up in the atmosphere once detaching from the orbiter vehicle. The external fuel tank is covered in a thermal foam insulation and contains two large tanks within, which house liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. The thermal foam insulation was there to protect against and prevent ice from forming with regards to the tank's contents. After being postponed over a dozen times, Space Shuttle Columbia launched on January 16, 2003. NASA was under a lot of pressure to get Columbia into space after so many setbacks. Space exploration is expensive, and the Space Shuttle program was no different. So, on launch, everything needs to go right. The smallest of mistakes could result in safety concerns as launching is the most dangerous part of the whole mission. In the moment, the launch of Columbia appeared to have been successful with no abnormalities. It could have been the perfect shuttle launch. However, the day after the launch, after looking over some of the video recordings, something peculiar was spotted by the NASA team. At 81 seconds after launch, a substantial piece of the foam insulation from the external fuel tank broke away from the outer shell and collided with the left wing's leading edge. At that point, the shuttle was climbing through 65,000 feet at a speed nearly two and a half times faster than the speed of sound. 
It was common for some of the foam cladding to break away from the external fuel tank during launch. The piece which had broken away on this launch was believed to have been around 20 inches in length. Those stationed on the ground investigated whether the impact to the left wing could be dangerous. It was not something that many at NASA were worried about, as foam impacts had happened before on previous missions. What no one realised at the time was that in this case, there had been substantial damage inflicted on the orbiter's left wing leading edge. There was debate on the level of damage the foam impact had caused during the launch. Some say that the foam had weakened the leading edge, causing a piece to later break off during the mission in space a couple of days later. Although, a test that was later carried out on the ground using the same section of the wing from the Atlantis space shuttle revealed that the foam could have created a hole during the launch. Either way, a hole with a diameter of 6 to 10 inches was punctured into the composite material which helps to heatproof the structure of the spacecraft. The material is called reinforced carbon carbon and it is arranged into tiles which cover certain parts of the space shuttle. This composite material was believed by some to be virtually indestructible. Reinforced carbon carbon is used in circumstances where surfaces can achieve extreme temperatures, such as on intercontinental ballistic missiles or a space shuttle which needs protection upon re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Despite the space shuttles being incredibly complex machines, they did utilise technology that was from the late 1970s. There was no way for the crew of Columbia to know from their onboard instruments that there was a problem with the left wing. They would have had to leave the space shuttle on a spacewalk and inspect the wing itself. No one was aware of the extent of the damage that was caused, although information regarding the foam impact was then forwarded to Commander Rick Husband a few days later. After comparisons with other launches, NASA technicians were overall not concerned and neither was the Columbia crew. The Columbia mission continued as intended with the hole in the left wing the whole time. It was now February 1st, 2003. Space Shuttle Columbia prepares for its arrival back on Earth after over two weeks in space and low Earth orbit. All objects which are orbiting the Earth are falling. To achieve a stable orbit, a space vehicle or satellite needs to have enough angular velocity and distance from the ground so that it falls away from the Earth. The process of getting the orbiter vehicle back on the ground is delicate and complex. To leave orbit, the shuttle's orbital maneuvering system rockets, or OMS rockets, will begin to slow the spacecraft so that it can gently fall back to Earth on an ideal trajectory, with just the right angle so that the heat resistant surfaces on the shuttle are exposed and bear the brunt of the energy that is created. With around 30 minutes to go until the touchdown, Columbia had begun to enter the Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean and everything up till this point seemed normal. Those on the ground in mission control were confident on a safe arrival in Cape Canaveral, Florida. During the re-entry process, extreme heat is generated on the outside of the orbiter. As the orbiter falls, air is compressed on the front and below the shuttle, which generates temperatures which can reach over 1500 degrees Celsius. Flames and plasma are visible inside the shuttle. This was normal and was even captured on video in Columbia's final moments. This video recorded from inside Columbia ends just 4 minutes before disaster. It revealed the crew were in high spirits as they conducted their re-entry. The autopilot was set to guide them through the atmosphere. Because there was a hole in the left leading edge of the shuttle, the extreme heat generated by re-entry entered the hole which began to damage the structural integrity of the wing and thus the shuttle itself. At 8.54, some sensors on the inside of the wing near the control surfaces towards the back end of the wing begin to record exceedingly high temperatures, which begins to concern the NASA team in mission control. The damaged left wing on Columbia begins to disintegrate. To compensate for the damaged wing, thrusters on board are firing at maximum power to keep the shuttle stable. Despite this, systems appear to be functioning as normal to both the crew on the ground and inside Columbia. As normal, the shuttle performs a series of rolls to help cool the outside skin of the vehicle. Varying systems in the left wing, however, are showing continuing unusual readings to those observing from the ground. The Columbia crew, however, are totally oblivious to the damage to the wing. At 8.58 Central Standard Time, Columbia entered the skies over the state of Texas. Many on the ground went outside to catch a glimpse of Columbia passing overhead. Some even recorded the shuttle on home video. Commander Rick Husband on board Columbia tries to contact the ground but at 8.59 and 32 seconds, all communication with the shuttle was lost. During the following seconds, a large section of the left wing broke off of Columbia which suddenly left the shuttle uncontrollable. It is uncertain on what happened in the moments afterwards. It is likely that the crew knew something was suddenly very wrong with their spacecraft. At 8.59 and 37 seconds, 
hydraulic pressure used to move the flight control services was lost. A master warning alarm would have sounded at this point, which would be the moment the crew realized that something was terribly wrong. Columbia would have pitched up uncontrollably. The crew members inside would have experienced extreme gravitational forces which may have resulted in trauma. Soon after, Space Shuttle Columbia disintegrated at 9am. All seven of the astronauts on board were killed in the disaster. News of the loss of Columbia became worldwide headline news. For the second time, a NASA space shuttle had been lost. The investigation concluded that the damage caused to the left wing leading edge was fatal. This was after an extensive investigation which saw debate on whether foam blocks from the external fuel tank could cause damage to the wing as much as speculated. The experiment was then carried out. A section of the same leading edge was taken from Space Shuttle Atlantis. The section of wing was rigged up in the firing line of a cannon which would shoot a similarly sized piece of the foam cladding from an external fuel tank. This section of a wing was an ideal test subject as it had seen service in space on multiple occasions. A foam block was then shot at the leading edge at over 500 miles per hour, and the results were conclusive. Cladding from the external fuel tank had breached the heat resistant reinforced carbon carbon tiles on board Space Shuttle Columbia during the launch phase. NASA was criticized for their management of the Space Shuttle program. The remaining space shuttles were grounded for a further two and a half years before resuming service in July of 2005. The space shuttle program ended six years later in 2011. The question remained, could the astronauts have been saved if action were taken before the shuttle attempted re-entry? Some experts think so, speculating that another shuttle could have been launched and those inside Columbia could have spacewalked over to the rescue shuttle. Such a thing has never been attempted. In the remaining years of the space shuttle program, Spacewalks to physically inspect the outside of the shuttle became mandatory. Astronauts were given tools and training to fix problems on board should they have occurred. Columbia became the second of the space shuttles to face catastrophe. In remembrance of those who died in the Columbia disaster, multiple memorials were set up. Seven asteroids were named after the different members of the Columbia crew. In 2004, a range of hills were discovered on Mars after being observed by the Mars Spirit Rover. The day after the one-year anniversary of the Columbia disaster, the seven peaks of these hills were named after the Columbia crew and collectively became known as the Columbia Hills. Hello everyone, welcome to the end of the video. I thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this one. I know it's been a little bit different. I have had a number of people asking if I was going to branch out into covering other incidents other than aviation, and that is something I am working on and you may see more variety in that regard sometime in the future. Anyway, it's that time of the week again where I thank my patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to get your name featured or read out at the end of the next video, you can join my Patreon from £3 per month. We have now gotten to the point where I have to start scrolling the Patreon names, so a big thanks to everyone who has joined. So a thank you to my £5 patrons, Aidan Montgomery, Hector Palmatellas, Jacopo, I hope I said that one right, KTP123, Ken Zachman, Christy, Murray Innes, Pacman7, who just missed out by the way on getting in on last week's Patreon readout, and finally Wrongtrack58. Special thanks to my £10 patrons for their generous support, Cherub Cherub, Daniel Hendricks, D. Rogers, who recently became a top tier patron, Side Effect, and Will Tanner. And that is it from me this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a great weekend, whatever it is you get up to, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.